Hey friends, I'm Jill Sandy. Welcome or welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven books I read in July. <music> I don't know if this headband thing is the look for me, but the way I'm experiencing hair loss right now, this is what it's gonna be for now. <laughs> All right. July. Honestly, July was not a good month for reading. And I think this is a general, <laughs> like, thing that happened in the book community because a lot of people whose videos I saw for reading wrap ups also didn't have great reading months in July. So I don't know the vibes were off but hopefully August is gonna be the jam and I just started fourth wing and we're off to a good start so fingers crossed that's all I have to say. Um, So let's talk about these seven books. I'm actually honestly surprised that I read seven books this month because I literally only read for like the first two weeks almost of July and then the rest of the month I was just like it is what it is so I'm still proud of myself on the quantity but the quality was you'll see First book I read in July was Sign Here by Claudia Lux. This book is about essentially the downstairs, uh, except that she kind of takes a different perspective on it. So in this HE double hockey sticks, uh, instead of like fire and like whatever you think, uh, people work in like what I was picturing at least as an office building <laughs> and um, the way that they torture you is by like having you like just basically do the same mundane things over and over and over and over again for like eternity and she even starts off like saying like you know that doesn't sound like too bad but once you start doing it for thousands and thousands of years and there's nothing else like the lack of excitement the lack of like adventure and things like that kind of drive you mad uh and then specifically each like floor on in this building um it just kind of gets a little bit better the higher up you go uh and so like the bottom floors it's like just straight torture whereas like the top floor you're kind of like an investigator trying to go back to earth and um convince humans to sell their souls and come downstairs along with you and then i guess based on like how horrible you are is what floor you land on anyways so I feel like that's as much as I can say about this book without going into the plot line. I will say that there is like one point of view downstairs and there's another point of view here on earth. And I ended up giving this book three stars. I did enjoy it, but I understand why people were saying that like this book was doing a little too much. I would, I would say that it just felt like the two different point of views felt like two very different books and while she did like tie them together I felt like the perspective of the downstairs wasn't really necessary in this book. It didn't like do anything to make the other plot line better or worse and I also felt like it wasn't the main plot line like it felt secondary to the other one which sucks because the whole point of the book was supposed to be the downstairs plot line and yes I refuse to say that word because I am not bringing bad vibes into my life so yeah overall I thought this was an enjoyable experience um, but I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a book that I would like recommend to anyone. Then, of course, I had to pick up this new release, Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. And, um, this book is about Elsie who, she is a physicist, I believe, but like just starting out in the world, um, after, you know, starting her career after college. 
whatever. Uh, and so in order to make a little bit more money, just because she's not really cutting it right now, she works on this like website app where essentially she pretends to date people um, for whatever benefit they need. So like um, one client um, reaches out to her and hires her to go to a wedding with him and pretend that she's his girlfriend. And she has these rules about how she'll only go on one date with each of her clients. However, she does have one favorite client who she kind of sees more than once and then she finally lands like her dream job that's gonna finally get her into the career that she wants to or she lands an interview and she realizes that one of the people who have a say in whether she gets hired or not is actually the brother of her favorite client uh and yeah romance ensues <laughs> they find each other attractive but obviously he's like what the heck is going on here uh you're my brother's ex-girlfriend um yeah the backstory is just not adding up now because why are you here and also uh he finds her kind of attractive but it's like uh you're my brother's girlfriend i really shouldn't um yeah I feel like you can't ruin the plot of a of a romance um but somehow i feel like i just did not really that doesn't give away any big plot points and yes this is me convincing myself the point is <laughs> i read this book i gave it four stars i absolutely loved it i always love ali hazelwood's like banter between characters i just like find myself like squealing and like so happy and i also thought it was like super interesting how um you know she goes from like the fake dating world to being exposed the one thing that i will say that felt really like weird and cringe to me was the fact that um the guy that she's in a relationship or developing a relationship with throughout the story is the brother of a guy that she's fake dating i feel like for you to be someone's brother and be attracted to his girlfriend and want her for yourself and like actually like pursue that is kind of cringe if you ask me and i know it all works out because it's like obviously it's fake but he doesn't know it's fake so like you're kind of a butt for that um but if you can look past that this is a really well written and really fun to read book and i highly recommend it next insurgent by veronica roth so if you watch my other videos you'll know that i gave divergent five stars so you would think that i was really excited to go into this book but actually i was really hesitant just because i felt like the direction that divergent was going in at the end of the book was not where i would have liked it to go uh, and so I was a little hesitant going into this book. Um, it was about like same thing as Divergent. These it's a world like a dystopian world where essentially a war kind of ruined everything. They don't really explain like why the world is the way that it is, but due to like this war, people have decided that they think they know what the reason for the war was some people think that it was like ignorance and so they formed a faction called erudite where they pursue knowledge um and then there's you know amity who pursues friendship there's um selflessness um etc 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 so these factions are just based on like those virtues that they believe uh, can stop the world from causing war uh, or so they lead you to believe and there is um, a bit of insurgence throughout the book uh, haha funny insurgent um, but yeah people basically you know kind of not conforming with the factions and so towards the end it just goes in like a little bit more of a sci-fi direction than what I was expecting and when I started Insurgent, I thought this book was going to be 
a continuation of that sci-fi like vibe because that's where we left off but it wasn't we actually did kind of take a step back from it a little bit it was an important part of this book but not like the main point of it so i'm happy with that development i did end up giving this book three stars so even though it was thankfully not what i was expecting it still was just like an okay book i was really annoyed with the two main characters tris and four because i felt like they argued for like no reason like it just felt like they're arguing to argue and that really like pissed me off if we're being honest <laughs> i also feel like four was like such a good guy in the first book and in this book it was just like such a step back for feminism like he was just making decisions on her behalf without even consulting her just assuming that she was gonna do what he said and then on top of that he doesn't get it when she's upset at him and he's mad that she's mad I did not like that also did not like the portrayal of mental health in this book i felt like like i get it it's hard going through uh this type of like mental state is really difficult but i felt like the author kind of portrayed her as like weak because of it um, like she didn't do anything throughout the entire book until the very end and that was just like kind of frustrating for me so I don't know. take that with a grain of salt like it wasn't that bad I obviously gave it three stars I just I don't know that I would recommend this and if I hadn't bought the whole entire series <laughs> um at once I probably would not have gone and bought the second book so we'll see hopefully the third one will live up to the first one because i have that one it's on my tbr i wasn't gonna read it i was getting ready to sell it but given that this one was like okay i'm hoping that one will be okay or better also next i read spy family volume four by tatsuya endo and this is about a secret spy named Twilight. He is on a mission to infiltrate this like private academy and thus he adopts a child to enter the academy. So he has like an in. Um, and in this one particularly, uh, she wants a dog and so they get one, but this is like a super um, interesting dog. That's all I'll say, other than the fact that I thought it was a polar bear. <laughs> it looks like a polar bear until I like realized at the end of the previous book, like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. So yeah, I gave this three stars. Uh, I think that this was fun. It was cute. It was funny, like some laugh out loud moments funny um but it was just like kind of a quick little read so i don't think that it could necessarily be more than three stars that's all now i'm just talking to talk so i'm gonna shut up now <laughs> next um i wanted to do a vlog giving into like mermaid core because that was the vibe and I loved the little mermaid and i went to go see the new one but alas that never actually came to fruition but i did get one thing out of it i read the original little mermaid by hans christian anderson i always want to say christian hans anderson and then it doesn't sound right anyways this was twisted <laughs> as wow I just like i'm shook okay the original little mermaid is nothing like the movie at all there is like homicide involved there is some very twisted mindsets there's no flounder no sebastian 
Um, so that was not fun. And um, no scuttle. And the Little Mermaid honestly doesn't even have a name. Uh, and she's just obsessed with this prince and also like the curse that the sea witch, uh, who also is now named Ursula, um, puts on her is just insane. Like she uh, does take her voice. That is the one thing that's accurate, except in this book, she cuts her tongue off. So if that doesn't give you an idea of what's going on here, <laughs> I don't know what else will. Um, but yeah, and then when she takes her feet, like when she gives her feet, um, she says like she can walk, but every time she walks, she feels like there's like swords like cutting up her legs. And it's not like, oh, she just feels the pain. Like she also bleeds while she walks. So it's really disturbing and really gross. But was interesting to see the difference. Uh, there are 11 other stories in here. Um, so like Thumbelina, uh, The Nightingale, The Ugly Duckling, The Swine Herd, etc. Those are like the main ones. And The Princess and the Pea. There was one specifically called The Tinder Box that kind of blew my mind. <laughs> um, so they were interesting, but I would not necessarily give the rest of the stories high praise um i kind of don't really care for the rest of them to be honest so i ended up giving this like 2.75 i never give like these like point decimal ratings or whatever but i just felt like it was not that great to hit three stars And then, Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Casamano. I finally, finally got to this book. It's been sitting on my shelf for so long and so many people have like constantly talk about how they like this book. And um, this is about Finley Donovan who meets with her um, agent at a Panera Bread. So she's a writer and she writes books about like mysteries and like people who um kill other people and so she's talking with her agent about how her next kill is going to be in the book but the person next to them overhears and thinks that she's actually an assassin for hire and tries to hire finley to murder her husband and then she's kind of stuck in this situation and finley donovan is kind of like the person who is like super unlucky and just continues to fall into these weird scenarios um, so in that sense of it, I kind of liked the book. It was really funny. It was really like out of this world, like this would never happen, but somehow I believe it funny. Um, I just think that there were moments where I'm like, all right, let's get on with it. Let's get a solution. And for that reason, I just like, I'm not sure that I want to continue like I think I heard that this was going to be a seven book series like why does this need to be seven books long <laughs> I think after the second one I would maybe stop reading um and I'm still not sure if I'm going to read the second one um but I did have a fun time reading this one there were some funny moments I like that there was that one Hispanic character named Vero and um yeah I have nothing else to say about this book Honestly, that's all I can remember. All right, moving on. So this book was kind of like the start of my reading slump. Electra by Jennifer Saint. I had really high hopes for this book because it's written by the same author as Ariadne, which is like one of my like top favorite books of all time. Um, Electra was the point of view of three women in Greek history. Um, that was Cassandra, the seer, uh, Clytemnestra, and Electra. Essentially, this is a like feminist retelling of the Iliad, where um, the Trojan War took place because of Helen of Troy, and it's like told by the perspective of all the women involved. 
which I thought was really interesting. I learned a lot more about the Iliad. Um, I felt like it, it did feel like very accurate to like what I've read before. However, I don't understand why the book was called Electra. I felt like the book primarily revolved around Clytemnestra and that is Electra's mom. Uh, I thought it was going to go in a direction of like Electra following her family's like dark line. So her father has like a history of darkness and I thought that that's where this was going but it really more revolved around Clytemnestra and like how she adapted to like the situation what was going on so I don't really understand why they chose to name this Electra. Either way um, I think that it was a well-written book. It was really, really interesting. Um, I learned a lot about Greek history. It felt very accurate. However, I don't know if it was just like my headspace, like where I was when I read this, because it was not a good time. <laughs> but the book took me like way longer than it needed to. I think this book was like 290 pages and it took me like a week and a half to finish. I was reading like 30 pages a day not and some days i just didn't even feel like picking it up and i don't know if it was because the book was so dense and hard to read or i just wasn't in a place to read it overall i do think that i would have enjoyed it a lot more had i been in a he better headspace and so because of that i gave this a three and a half stars um yeah i think i tend to generally overall like just really enjoy greek mythology and i hope to get into it a little bit more so yeah, I actually read this before I read Finley Donovan is Killing It. So um, Finley Donovan was the last book I read in July. Um, this was, I felt like a little cute and sweet video. As you can see, I did not give the books really high ratings this month and I'm really disappointed and upset and August better come through because I was having such a good reading year before July. <sighs> With that being said, that's all I have for y'all folks. Uh, if you made it this far, leave a face emoji. Any face. Preferably the melting one because that's how I feel, but leave a face with how you felt about July as reading month and make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and uh, yeah, all those things. I will see you guys when I see you next. Bye!